why don't we start with our wrap up? Are you ready, Cornelia? Absolutely. And, and Tama, you're going to link elbows with me on this one, right? So as we close out the event here, we can do this together. So awesome. I have just a few slides that we'll put up as kind of teasers and you'll be able to see all of these. We'll make them all. Um, but it's sometimes good to see everything written down, everything that we've done in the last two days. So bear with me a second. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And go into present mode. There we go. I assume you can see that, Tamo. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do first in this wrap up is we want to reflect back on the, the last few days and then really talk about where to go from here. The best things is when you come out of a conference is that you can't wait to get back into the office, maybe the following Monday, maybe Tuesday for us in the United States, to start implementing the things that you learned. And we hope that despite this virtual format, despite the fact that the format's a little bit different than what we're all accustomed to, that you are jazzed and excited and ready to start applying some of those things. So if we take a look back and reflect on some of those things, um, really one of the first things that we talked about is, and really just closed with as well with Kelsey, is what is GitOps. And Kelsey, as he's known to do, really put that all together in a nutshell with a concrete example by showing that, yes, there's some automation. It's about repackaging that automation into a, a primitive that is reconcile, which is a cloud native thing. It's about the, uh, the declarative configuration that that reconciler ties to. He also pulled that into Git in terms of the version history, and then making sure that there's a delivery mechanism to tie those things together. So really it's those four principles. But as he pointed out, there are, um, there are a number of technologies. What I thought was really cool was that he ran the reconciler on his laptop. So rather than just having it installed into Kubernetes. Now Kubernetes, of course, is a great runtime for reconcilers, um, but it really isn't the only technology. And so that's the first thing is that, you know, under the heading of what is GitOps, we really focus on the principles. Then you saw people like um, Stefan and Lee demonstrate some of the tools that support those principles, but it isn't a specific tool. And so there's room there, there's room for flux. There is room for Argo CD. There's room for a lot of different technologies. Um, community. The GitOps community, what we did, if nothing else, in the last couple of days is we brought together people that I don't think had seen each other before. And the, the conversation in the Slack channel, I mean, Tama, you've spent more time in the Slack channel than I have because I've been so busy on the, all of these other things as well. And I'm not as good of a Slack slacker as you are. Um, I mean that by, you know what I mean, uh, texting, you know, social media. Um, so I, I think you would agree that the community that we saw in the Slack channel and the conversation there was pretty vibrant and pretty fantastic. Um, so uh, then another thing uh, that we talked about was GitOpsing all the things. So if this isn't just about the cloud native applications. And even just now when we were chatting with Kelsey, we were talking about the reconcilers and he almost kind of forgot about the reconcilers that are there for cloud native, native applications. He said, yeah, you have to build them. But of course there are some reconcilers that are there that are supporting the cloud native applications. But then you can also have be reconciling or be GitOpsing infrastructure, content delivery networks, IDP settings, Kubernetes itself, and so on. And we saw some great examples from Kyle earlier where I think there was a, a bit of a buzz around the, the sheet ops. Um, and so in what he was what he was GitOpsing there was really some cost, some, some cost functions, some cost attributions in their, their AWS um, data center or their AWS deployment. And then finally, um, GitOps, uh, it's not Git delivery. It's not CI, although it has some implications on CI. So the way, whether, how you do things in CI is going to have some implications on how well you can GitOps things moving on from that. 
but there's continuous delivery, continuous operations. And then Maya brought in the great term that I hadn't heard before, but it made complete sense when she said it, which is continuous security and more. So again, we want to apply those things. Anything else to add there, Tomo? No, I just think this reflection, it just really helps to think about this community and just even in these two days, how many great contributions came in from all of our different speakers and all of the different um, just conversations coming through. Yeah, and um, as the audience would assume, we obviously had lots of conversations um, and preparation coming into this. And that's where a lot of these um, sharing of ideas came and we said, oh yeah, that's gotta go into the event and oh, this is great. So again, just so thankful of everybody who agreed to participate. Yeah, and I wanna have to, a shout out to Tamo here. Tamo orchestrated all of that sharing over the last several weeks and um, brought a whole bunch of people together. And so Tamo, thank you for everything that you did to, to make those stories available to all of us this week. Um, so, uh, so another thing, of course, that we were able to do was cross across all of the different constituents in an organization. So there was, there were, you know, how do, how do the practitioners, the platform engineers communicate with their leadership and how do they get leadership buy-in? We heard stories where people were lucky and they had that leadership buy-in. And then we heard some other stories where they're still working on how, how they can get that leadership buy-in. Then there's the application developers we heard from Kingdon this morning, who was working to try to get his IT, you know, his platform teams, and maybe they don't even have platform teams yet, but to start understanding some of these concepts. So how do we use those types of things? And then, in fact, we also talked about how, particularly when it comes to if you're looking for some funding or you're looking for some justification on spending some time in a particular area, being able to tie the GitOps practices, the GitOps tools, everything that you're doing there back to the business value. And those business values can come everything from, we don't wanna breach, we wanna stay out of the headlines, we don't wanna be the next big headline. So how does GitOps actually contribute to those things? And we even leveraged kind of a touch point to some of the industry standard stuff around that Dora has been doing around the proven technologies of tying IT functions back to business value. So that's what we did. And I think we heard a lot of stories from people who said, just keep communicating, reach across. I loved hearing Steve Wade earlier today say, get closer to the developers. We wanna work with them. We wanna break it down the wall that used to sit between operations and development. Oh, we shouldn't talk to each other. We wanna break down those walls. And it's only through that feedback loop that we can improve. Um, having empathy, I think that really gets back to what we were just talking about with even that example with Steve, is understand that everybody's really just trying to do their best. And if we try to help each other and provide kind of those tools that can bridge the gap between these different organizations that existed in the past, that certainly comes goes a long way. And when I was in the Slack channel, I mean, there were so many people that were so helpful and so empathetic of different different people's situations and giving pragmatic advice, um, even if they hadn't hadn't faced that challenge themselves, brainstorming that, that really is a shot, a, a, a sign of empathy. Um, actually, it's okay if I jump in. Oh, please. Um, I thought also a lot of emphasized takeaways that got repeated was um, uh, because change is hard, um, part of showing empathy is also um, being prepared, right? So the, there's, there's no doubt that there's some, you know, upfront investment of your own time and of preparing. And that's what the GitOps conversation kit, that, that's what we're really trying to help with. But I, I, I saw it was, um, you know, a good learning that it was repeated across multiple speakers to, um, you know, study up what you can. Um, understand that you're asking people to learn something new and take the time to do it. So um, there is definitely also the investment. And um, But I do think the speakers have shared so many great creative ways to 
um, be smart about that preparation for yourself, um, as well as perhaps, um, you know, building some things where um, you can abstract away some of the experience so they can get the concepts and get excited about that um, before saying, okay, you know, you got um, three weeks of studying up on something before you kind of get to the end goal. So I, I thought that was a, a nice repeated um, comment from experience from our speakers. Yeah, very good. Um, uh back over here. All right. So, and where do you get started? Um, so we've talked about, so to, one of the best places to get started is you understand now kind of the North Star, where you want to go. So the first thing is, and again, this kind of, kind of rings back to the pragmatism that we heard from Kelsey is, what have you got in front of you now? How can you move toward that North Star if you don't understand where your starting point is? So assess what you've got today. Where are you applying some of the principles that you need? And what are the first principles that you want to apply? So that's the next step. And then of course, that's a big part of where the GitOps conversation kit is going to help you is that there's gonna be so much pragmatic advice there that says, ah, well, if you're starting with automation. So for example, um, and in fact, today, if we go back to Kelsey's talk, he started with the de declarative configuration. So he, he moved away from having things as an imperative script and said, the first thing I want to do is I want to describe these things in a data model. So there's a number of different ways that you can get started. And a lot of those ideas will be captured in the, the GitOps conversation kit. And um, Tomo, I... I, I know you've talked a little bit about this, that the GitOps conversation kit isn't going to be something that we publish tomorrow and uh, we're done because in this world, we're never done. There's always going to be ads and increment, incremental ads to that. So do you want to say anything about that whole yes. process? So uh, hopefully I've repeated this enough, but uh, always doesn't, you know, never hurts to keep repeating. So please tell your friends if they didn't make it today, or if you're thinking about it, um, as long as you register at GitOpsDays.com, um, that means you'll be on this list um, to be able to see the recordings and to receive this kit. Um, and the recordings will be part of this. Um, uh, I can go to the next slide if you like, if, I can, you, if you want me to go a little bit deeper. Uh, so yes, so the my my vision for this kit was, you know, having gotten feedback from all of you, uh, yes, I'm excited, or I actually just got started, but I'm excited already, uh, but I can already foresee, or maybe I've experienced, we've definitely seen some people on the chat, you know, I've, I've been trying to evangelize, but it's been really a struggle, you know, everybody's got different um, company cultures and existing histories and existing technologies, so we, we totally get it, and we would like to help you um, to be joined teams with other stakeholders and other teams in your organization. So this is our first um, start to this. And as um, Cornelia mentioned, it's really, uh, hope, hopefully, a living kit. Um, so if you signed up, you'll be getting an email within a week, and we'll be sending you to a link where not only we'll have some existing resources that we hope will help, um, but we'll be gathering the videos and the, the quotes and the proof points and, you know, other stuff that will come out of these two days because it was really, really rich and we'll be converting to kit both to talking to stakeholders and talking to your teams, getting them onboarded. And so we hope that this will be very helpful. So we, we hope that the goal is one, to find the shared priorities in your organization. Um, and some of the things the speakers brought up is finding the common words, right? Like uh, I think Kyle was mentioning even renaming your team so that they can understand, oh, this team is doing the thing that I care about as opposed to a name that I, I, you guys do something, I don't get it, right? So even these small things are really, really huge. Um, again, hopefully you found this event to be a really rich event with stories, proof points, these different use cases, different types of companies, uh, different parts in the company journey, different parts in the cloud or Kubernetes journey. Um, and then hopefully uh, we've already had speakers share with us, oh, there was a video that um, Stefan did about a year ago and that, that's just been great. I've been sharing that. So we'll be finding those as well as hopefully the videos that we had from today and um, we have our regular user group videos. We'll be gathering all those together. And again, it's a living kit. We'll be putting it out to you and getting your feedback. You know, if you tell us, um, well, this part was great, but I need no more of that or less of the other thing, um, it'll be a living kit. Uh, so in fact, some of the things we were chatting about on the Slack is um, 
yes, there is, you know, we, we have different orgs that we have to work with as well. So I've agreed that um, all of you who've registered, you'll have early access by going through, um, you, you've already registered, so you'll, you'll get a link where you can get this kit. Um, but then after that, maybe you know, after a couple of weeks, uh, obviously we want it out in the community. So we were already talking about how, since it's a living, breathing kit, maybe we'll have it on one of our repos and people can contribute to it and we'll always be improving. So uh, my goal is that uh, you'll get your first email within a week and that once per month, you'll get a, an updated email on new things that we've added and new things that we've improved based on your feedback, you know, what's working and what's not working. So it's, it's an ongoing process. Uh, and again, to remind you, to, if you're registered, um, that's fine, go ahead. If you're, to remind you, if you're registered, um, you'll get first dibs uh, to the kit that includes the recorded um, links to the recorded videos. Um, one thing we haven't really talked too loudly about, although um, Stefan showed a little bit, uh, is the GitOps hands-on. So uh, it's out on GitHub. This is a bit.ly that goes to it. It's something that Stefan created. If you haven't seen it already, it's a fantastic way if you've you know, watched videos or read blog posts, but you've never actually been able to get your hands dirty with some kind of GitOps experience. Stefan created this fantastic hands-on that you can do on your own. Uh, and it uses Flagger, so you go through Canary deployment as well. And uh, hopefully it's really helpful. We have this one, it happens to be on EKS. Uh, and using uh, AWS App Mesh because uh, we wanted to abstract away some of the, um, as some of you may know, uh, the the infrastructure challenges that come with creating a hands-on and you know creating this kind of demo. And uh, it's it's really been great and and easy to be able to hand out and and maintain. Uh, but in the future, of course, we'd love to have hands-on on other platforms. So if you try it out and you want to help contribute and, and expand. Uh, the different types of hands-on we can have, then definitely please uh, play with it. Uh, this will also be in the kit, so we'll point you to it and uh, we'd love to hear if it's useful or not. And then finally, the third next step, um, we created uh, GitOps at weave.works. Uh, again, it, we want your feedback, we want your requests. If there's any way that um, we can help you uh, with the next steps, uh, any way you can, you can join the Slack or you can email here. Um, if, you, if you get your kit and you want to give us feedback, there are various channels for you to do it, but we also created this email so you can come straight to me and we'll help you as much as possible. And of course, uh, no hiding, we are Weaveworks and uh, the GitOps hands-on will give you a very sort of um, open source and basic experience of GitOps, but if you go through it, most of the people tell us yes, I want an enterprise version. I want this for teams. I want those types of capabilities. Uh, you can email us. And if you like a demo for an enterprise version of GitOps through our own Weave Kubernetes platform, of course, we are happy to do that for you. So with that, I think we are about uh, on time to wind up. And you had some photos you wanted to share yeah. and reflecting on the two days. Yeah, so, so we learned a lot. We connected as a community and we sure had a whole heck of a lot of fun. So I think one of the, arguably one of the highlights of the last couple of days was all of the, uh, was certainly Daniel, our DJ. Um, and it was so much fun to actually start uh, doing some voting around that. And so what you see here on, this, on the slide is the final vote. Um, the final verdict was DJ desired state. I personally voted for DJ get up to get down. Um, I like that one as well. Um, but there isn't a single one on this list that, that wasn't worthy of, of five votes um, from each individual. So uh, I don't know, Tama, what was your favorite? Which one did you vote for? Oh, well, I put, um, I'm already blanking on, I, I put my own little vote, but I've completely forgotten. I think I did also put a, a, a vote for DJ Decide State. The poll was also limited on how Twitter works with these polls, but you know, looking at the other ones, actually Hold Back the Beats is pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I actually hadn't caught that one. And I think uh, someone else had posted, what about my DJ Cube Cuddle <laughs> with a Q? <laughs> so I thought those are pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah, really, really cool. Yeah. So I, I just want to reiterate a thank you to Daniel, who I still see as being 
being on and joining yes. us here. Super, super um, late at night. So. Um, and actually, I do want to take this moment. Um, we have on the website, um, you know, code of conduct, which of course is important for every event. And, you know, I just felt like the energy that I saw on Slack and the generosity and the helping each other out and sharing comments and just a very um, empathetic and very, um, you know, helpful mood. It, it's just great that, you know, I actually forgot to bring it up, but I just felt like I saw it in process and it just really warmed my heart. So really appreciate yeah. the, the positive uh, energy people brought, especially during these difficult times. Yeah, absolutely. And some photos. So I just realized that these photos are fantastic and we have all the speakers up here. Now, one of my friends and uh, former Pivotal colleagues, Josh Long, was very well known for getting up on stage and doing a selfie with the whole crowd. So here's a challenge for all of us who are doing these virtual events for the foreseeable future, that we have to figure out how to satisfy Josh Long's and, and other people's needs to start getting photos of our audience. So we'll leave that as a challenge. Um, but I'll take this as an opportunity again to thank everyone who spoke, who participated. Um, I love all the smiles on, the, on this screen. Um, and there's another one as well, which are the ones that we just got recently, but check out, I, I love this one over here from, from Lee and, and Steve, yes, both I wearing their cuttlefish and Damani's wearing it today too. Yes. So, um, but love the cuttlefish, which for those of you who don't know, the cuttlefish is, um, a, a Tamo creation. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we joked about um, an unofficial GitOps mascot. Um, and as you can imagine, with every company, there's lots of branding discussions, but I got it snuck in. So that's the other surprise that you'll have. If you do the GitOps hands-on, and any of you have done it, you'll see when you're doing your canary deployment from uh, blue to green, uh, I was saying, Stefan, blue and green, that's great. But what if we had a cuttlefish doing one thing and then off to another thing? So that's what you'll be able to discover if you get through the hands-on. And again, there's actually a GitOps hands-on um, channel in our Slack if you're already there. So if you get stuck at all or you have any questions, please, please, please go there and we'll do our best to help. Um, so on that note, are we ready to wrap up, Cornelia? I think we are. Excellent. So there it is, the last thank you slide of the, the, the uh, screen. So I will let you close us out as our wonderful host over the last two days. And again, thank you, Tamo, for being such a great host. Okay. For this event. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cornelia, for coming in for all the extra hours. And thank you for um, everybody in our crew and our speakers. So uh, thanks to the audience. We are officially closed, um, but we still have Daniel here, who's hardcore and staying up really late Berlin time because uh, I wanted to make sure we acknowledged uh, our team to be able to come. So let's say, Cornelia, if you stop sharing your screen, we'll bring up all the people who've been working behind the scenes and making this possible, as well as um, we've invited any of our speakers who are up at this hour, because many are in many different places, to do a group photo. <laughs> so if you guys want to take off, it's fine. But if you want to stick around and see us be silly with our group photo, that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to allow people in and hopefully we can also allow in some of the people who've been so helpful. I'll let Sarah know. Okay. And um, do we want to, yo. do we want to close, <laughs> close this room and go back backstage or do we just want to invite everyone onto the live stage? Daniel has a glass I, of wine. I invited everybody on okay. stage. Fantastic. We'll see. You. The main do. stage. <laughs> Yeah. We'll do a uh, group view. I'm looking at my own with a group view. <laughs> and we can have some low level music, I guess, from Daniel. How does this work? Stacy, Stacy's the one in control. No, Daniel, you'll have to adjust it um, manually on your part. So just keep it low, please. Okay, excellent. So since we're already recording on Zoom, we have, you know, our photo is already happening. So Yeah. Um, Javeria, we need your camera. Yes. It's a beautiful photo, but there you are. Yeah. Fix more. <laughs> Wine less. Wine less. <laughs> nice. Excellent. So we see Daniel there. Um, I don't. <laughs> yes. Enjoy the wine. Next time I'll send you a bottle. Thanks so much for making this such a fun event. Um, and a lot of you probably haven't seen the face of Stacy. Stacy, speak up so your green will come on. Hello, hello, Stacey. hello. There you go. See you <laughs> finally. <laughs> it says uh, WeWorks user group, but really, um, 
this event would not be possible <laughs> without Stacy uh, really learning up really quickly on all this broadcast broadcasting software and doing it. Uh, yes, and Steve's got a shirt on. Excellent, we got the shirts. Um, I, never got my, I never got mine laundered. Um, but uh, yeah, we're even making jokes that uh, if you guys want to outsource some online events <laughs> crew, we've got it here. Uh, of course, thank you also to um, Damani for being my MC. It's always fun that we've been able to hang out together in the past. And so to be able to hang out here during the event has been super fun. Um, and uh, Damani's out in New York. Uh, we mentioned that uh, Daniel's out in Berlin. Stacy and I are out here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Cornelia is in Santa Barbara. And also I want to call out Sarah. If you could say something, the green will go around you. Hi, everyone. Yep, I'm from London. So like Daniel, heading off for the whiskey in bed. <laughs> yes. And so Sarah jumped in to help handle people, handle our speakers in the, in the backstage. So really, really um, gives us a lot of breathing room to do that. Um, Stefan, of course, I think is off sleeping. Uh, we've got Lee here who just tirelessly has been helping both with handling, prepping, um, speaking, uh, getting demos ready, working with Chris Hine. <laughs> like, I mean, there's just really, the list goes on and on. Uh, and Lee's out in Colorado. So we're just so happy to have um, Lee and Stefan, Daniel, and Stacy. Um, we've also got Chan, who's out in Thailand, but uh, we, let, we didn't uh, make him busy. But this is our developer experience team. And we're really happy to work with Cornelia, who I've known before and so excited that you're here at this time so that we could do this. <laughs> and to our speakers, of course, Steve, Kyle, Javeria, Kingdon, um, not only being part of the um, community um, all this time, but now uh, we, maybe we would have said Flux community, but now it's really a GitOps community. And so uh, you guys have gone above and beyond um, coming to speak, um, some of you more than once, but I've just been seeing you on the Slack channel, just <laughs> chatting away, uh, helping each other out, um, connecting with each other. That's just been really fun. Um, and then of course, in the end, I was looking for questions for Kelsey. There are a few comments there, but you were all just like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like oh yes the way yeah. he puts it that way it just it's such a good reminder yeah. and all that so it's really really it's great just... so this yeah, is our live just... photo Woo -woo! <laughs> so yep. with that if anybody's still watching us thanks for hanging out and thanks for joining the party but i think we're going to be going offline now stacy you're the one in control you're the one who's going to have us go private and Daniel, thank you for the Stevie wonder at the end. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, we've got to end with Stevie. Stevie's good. Goodbye, audience. Goodbye, <laughs> audience. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you so much.